This is commentary. This is who I really am. You don't like it? You don't have to watch my videos. You don't have to talk to me. But if you do like it, you can have sex with me. This is commentary. Hey everybody, Roger here. I want to talk to you guys today about something that's pretty f funny in a way. I mean, I'm uh, again, I don't like criticizing people in general, but when they start throwing their hog hogwash in Hogwarts uh, into any subject, then I do make a spill of it. So, I'm going to be talking today about this lady named Dana Schmelding, Schmeling or whatever. Anyway, she wrote this she's a she's a uh, comic writer, I guess, and um, and she also starred in a short film called, and this is going to give you an idea of like, I guess, what her what her background is. And uh, things that I say across the way in this video are going to give you an idea of what kind of a person she is. Um, which again, to each their own, to each their own. Uh, she starred in a short film called Abortion Party in 2016. I saw the preview for it, and it looked very, uh, very uh, logo channel-ish, let's put it that way. So... Anyways, okay, where I'm going with all this is this. This Miss Thing here, um, she, long story short, she wrote this uh, column in the Huffington Post channel and it kind of went viral about her experience trying to get on the Harry Potter um, uh, Forbidden Journey ride. Uh, apparently, you know, she's, a, she's an overweight or plus size woman. I'm probably going to get banned for saying that word, right? Then again, you can't assume what my words come out of my mouth, just like I can't assume your your gender, right? So yeah, you can't really flag this. Um, anyways, <laughs> where I'm going with this is this. She, uh, long story short, she was on a roller coaster. She wanted to get on this roller coaster ride at the Harry Potter amusement or the Universal Cities amusement park on the Harry Potter ride, and she got on, snuck in, and um, snuck in with her friends into the line. And then by the time she got in, she was sitting on the chair and clicked in. Um, Mind you, that click is important. Um, one of the supposedly 20-something uh, year old managers uh, told them that group, her friends and her, that they had to come with him because of a safety hazard. And uh, anyway, so she couldn't get on the ride. Long story short. Now I'll be outlining. I'll be outlining this as I talk here. Um, but she couldn't get on the ride for safety reasons. Those safety reasons are going to be valid as I discuss this. So. She starts off her article. I'm going to go ahead and go through the article of how she's... The key points that I thought were pretty interesting. She refuses to take... She starts off the article by, by saying, I refuse to take the additional guilt of not having gotten into uh, Harry Potter until I was 35. Okay, so already we, we know two patterns here. She's entitled, or she feels entitled. Uh, she isn't... I don't know about what her struggles are, you know. They're probably more emotional than anything. Again... I am assuming, and I'm, I'm, outline, I'm outright saying that. Uh, but when somebody has to think, when somebody has to say that there's additional guilt in being 35 years old before I'm a Harry Potter fan, that lets you know about like you know hashtag privileged people problems they have. You know, it's uh, such a small thing. And, and granted, it's just probably her plain words. She's a comic writer, so um, yeah, whatever, take it as you will. Uh, I looked at it as, you know what, you're, you're privileged already enough to, to be a plus-size woman um, and have the actions that you take as a plus-size woman um, to be doing the things that you're doing as a plus-size woman. And I say plus-size woman with an asterisk because that includes all Americans, whether they're plus-size, small-size, petite, buff, whatever. Um, we all have these privileges as Americans to have the luxury to bitch about the stupidest things in the world, this being one of them. So... <clears throat> she then goes on to say the depression and disgust surrounding uh, Donald Trump's election sent her into a um, YA fantasy if anybody could tell me what YA means I don't know what that means um, yell, yelling all out I don't know that would be an O Y A O, right um, sent me into a YA fantasy endurance run of reading to read up on the Harry Potter novel Take your privilege somewhere else, please. So, uh, I, I, I'm guessing she's about 37 now, 36 or 37. I'm not trying to dox her or anything, but she did disclose her age. Um, 35 when the Donald Trump, uh, 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 
Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton's election cycle was happening and it, it really stressed her out. Kind of like the lady that screams no after he got elected. So, um, And kind of like a lot of people who went out and lied afterwards saying that white supremacists and people were calling everybody faggots and and uh, oh, am I going to get banned for saying that? Um, calling people the F word, call you know, making fun of their genders, and which all turned out to be false and, and exaggerations, uh, if anything. Um, I'm pretty sure maybe there was one or two cases like that across the United States. Anyway, so apparently her mindset is that Trump, the, the election of Donald Trump got her depressed, and so she went to this downward spiral and started reading Harry Potter to, to console her. Take your privilege somewhere else, please. So, when, when, when she got wind that uh, her friends and her, her friends wanted to plan a visit to Universal Studios, she's like, it has to be on, the, on when the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is going to take place because I want, to, um, I want to get on that ride. And so they all agree, yeah, let's go, or I want to get on all the rides regarding Harry Potter. So yeah, they all agreed with that. And so they all went to Universal Studios when Harry Potter was around. So, um, while she was there... She received a message from a friend. I'm not going to name the friend's name. It's on the article if you want to read it. And it said, it was from a plus size friend. It said, um, I ended up being kicked off of the Hogwarts ride because I didn't fit. Uh, but, and she did also disclose this in the, in, the, in, the, in the article, in the column. But, Universal Studios decided to give her a front of the line pass to all other rides. Hashtag privilege. Hashtag privilege. Hashtag privilege. Take your privilege somewhere else, please. See? You can't, you can't, you can't say that you're being excluded because of fat shaming. And I'll get into more of this later because she does bring this up. So let's just say this person was privileged enough to, you know, they probably got her life saved. Um, if anything bad was to have happened, she got, ended up getting a, a front of the line pass for all of the rides. I would say it's a pretty good trade-off in my opinion. So, um... She had, after she received that text message, it got, you know, the next thing she said in the, in the column was she researched size discrimination months before going to Universal Studios. Size discrimination. Discrimination is just discrimination. I mean, granted, I guess you have to be more specific when it comes to things. And, and I wouldn't assume that size in this, in this case here with Universal Studios, size, this isn't size discrimination. It's basically engineers and people who put this ride together stating the limits of what the ride has to offer and having people who are employed at Universal Studios who don't want to be sued for somebody falling out of a chair on this ride doing their fucking job. That's all it is. It's not fat discrimination. My God, people. So, and argue with me on that. If you want to debate me, let me know. I'd, I'd be more than happy to. Um, these people are just doing their job. So... She ends up going on saying she's a self-proclaimed, big, loud, and, oh, what is the word? Demanding uh, plus-size woman who always gets, who will not bow down or something like that. I'm like, okay, great. Well, you can be all those things, but bringing up qualities about yourself like that, I guess. And I've done it too. But it, it, it has other people question them. And rightfully so. I mean, I've been questioned about mine when I bring them up, so it's okay. Maybe you are. Maybe you are, and you're telling the truth there. I, I but it, to bring it up in an article like that is just kind of weird. Anyways, I'm being a hypocrite. So she decides to do this. She decides that she's going to cut into the line with her friends, trying to go in unknown, you know, unknowingly crossing the the security and the managers, you know, while doing so. I'm assuming it's the way she wrote this up. And she's like, okay, well, I'm almost near the end, you know, and we're talking and nobody's noticing that I'm a plus size woman I'm going on this ride. She goes into the seat, she clicks and she's like, I am free. And then all of a sudden, nope, uh, I, this is how she describes it. She refers to one of the staff who is doing their job as a 20 something, not the awesome Pet Shop Boys song, uh, but a 20 something um, ride manager had asked them to move aside due to safety reasons. So, <laughs> she, they, had to, they had to go into this room where there was another chair there, and they, uh, the manager had said, hey, can you please get in this chair because we need to determine if, you're, if this is going to be a safety issue or not. And all of her friends turned around and looked at her, and she's like, okay, I'll get in the chair. 
and it has to click three times for it to be safe. It only clicked once. For one lady, I'm gonna call you out on a really big thing here that I have a very big problem with. You, you, you tried giving a minor insult by, with age discrimination, if you wanna put discrimination with words in front of it. You, you uh, put out some age discrimination there by saying this guy was a 20 something manager. You're being a hypocrite yourself because you're judging this person. And anyways, this person who is a 20 something manager did his job right. He probably saved your life with only one click, with only one click. Imagine if there was some sort of a crazy bump with your weight, and again, I'm not judging you, I'm just stating the obvious, with your weight, with how big your body is, uh, with the ride limits that the engineers of the ride have you know, gone on to say these are the safety precautions, with the fact that Universal Studios does not want a lawsuit in their hands for a wrongful death or wrongful injury because of incompetent managers, you're now telling, you're now call, you're reversing it and you're saying this person is is not doing their, or, or, or they're, they're, they're fat discriminating you? No, they're not. They're doing their fucking job and probably saving your life. But no, you know what? You, as you self-proclaimed in the, in the, in the piece there, you're intelligent. You're intelligent and smart. You obviously didn't think that part through of this, this scenario then, did you? He say, he probably saved your life. You know what? And it's not his fault how these things are built. It's not his fault. And it's not his fault, it's not anybody's fault, but it's not the engineer's fault when they have to deal with budgets and stuff and they have a certain quota. They're not gonna accommodate anybody, everybody. Nothing is realistic like that. That's why clothes have sizes. You choose the right size for you. That's why rides have sizes or, 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 or size limitations and weight limitations because some are good for you and some are not. Now granted, I will give you this. If Universal Studios did not put on their website showing that there's any, and I'm gonna check this afterwards before I post this, that there is that there are restrictions on some rides that people are allowed to go on because of size, if they didn't disclose that on the website, then you do have a right to have some sort of a, uh, a compensation of your money back. I would assume, or at least some of it, because that's not delivering the full product information to you. I'll give you that. But, do you see my point? You're, you're, you're insulting this 20 year old kid who's actually, wow, he's doing his fucking job. I applaud him. I applaud whoever this kid was that pulled you aside and did that. I applaud the kid, whatever the other 20 year old kid did, um, who, who um, uh, pulled aside your other friend who, who had who had tweeted you or messaged you when you were there about the incident that she had and she ended up getting a uh, you know a front of the line pass I applaud people for stopping people like that because they're saving lives they're not trying to shame you into anything you're putting you're putting your head your thoughts your own perceptions of what you think they're doing in them and you're accusing them of something that they're not doing they are doing their job get over it God so, <laughs> so she she then continues on on her on her rant, saying, you know, this body discrimination that I went through just now, and I go through it daily, is what she says. We all go through some form of discrimination, lady. We all do. Every single person that I work with, I work with about thirty people directly daily. And I'm pretty sure just because I think of myself in a certain way, every single person there probably thinks 100% different of what I do. There's probably a person that says, oh my God, you're not doing enough. There's probably another person that thinks, oh my God, you do more than your fair share. Oh, and there's another person that probably thinks, oh my God, you're a fucking asshole and I hate you and I hate the way that you talk. I hate your voice. You sound like a fucking speedy ass munchkin or something. I don't know. So, <laughs> you can't stop it, lady. In order to get yourself into your own comfort zone, you have to just do what I do. Who gives a fuck what anybody thinks about you? I certainly don't. I certainly don't. Fuck that. Fuck that shit. The minute you start letting other people's um, ideas of you and perceptions of you get in the way of you living your life, that's when you have issues of your own that you have to work out. And I think, and I think that you you know this. I think that you know this, but you're, look, you're looking to play the victim card. I don't understand it. I don't understand you. I don't understand people like this. Now she's putting words into, uh, she's saying she's being body discriminated against. Um, she is also saying that it's institutional hatred of fat people. What? I mean, uh, no, no, it's not. We've had an influx of fucking 
chemicals in our food. We've had an inf that make our body our bodies weaker. They make when we ingest any sort of Franken foods, which is probably 99% of the shit that's out there, our bodies are weak and we can't absorb and process not to, uh, anything that's that's beneficial to our bot for our bodies from these foods and and so our bodies end up getting weaker and weaker. We have more fat stores. Um, our bodies are working overtime to try to do what it can, what it can can do, and we ha and the result is we're we're processing more and more and more and more shit food. Even the stuff that you think is healthy is not healthy, but now we have an influx of of um, of morbidly obese more morbidly morbidly obese people in in our um, uh, lifetime. And it's escalating. It went from like this to this, so it keeps going up, and 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 it's it's sad. It's very sad. We have kids with type two diabetes. We have kids with with uh, ADHD. We have with my recent video. We have kids with uh, autism, uh, and and all these parents think that they're doing the right things for these kids. They're not. They're not. And this this should outrage you because because we're letting this shit happen. We're we're. We're refusing to look at what actual healthy food is. I'm going off the topic here, but you know what? It's, it's leading up to my point. I apologize. I'm going crazy like this, but it's it's dear to my heart because you know I've uh, I think we've all have known people who have died from heart failure, heart disease, conditions that could have been controlled if we just had fucking real food. If we stopped relying on all these fucking medications, all these fucking things happening in the world that other people control that we have to be subject to. We're now a joke. It, it pisses me off. So, anyways, these are the things that that have the reason why engineers probably back in the day didn't make all these. They didn't know we were going to have an epidemic of epic proportions of people being morbidly obese. And again, I say morbidly. I should, yeah, I do mean it. It's it's it's, it's a health hazard. It's a, it's a it's a risk. It's a risk to you. It's it's a risk when the more and more people die of these kind of diseases, the more the insurance premiums out of pocket costs for people are going to be among other things, you know, the heartbreak that we have when we lose you, you know, the, um, that's why I'm a rough person when it comes to be, you know, dealing with the facts. I don't, I don't, I don't joke around. I give it to you straight. I let you know what I think. I never used to be this way. I think it's only been the last couple of years when I really started getting, you know, in control of my life and, and understanding what I wanted that I turned out to be this way. Yeah. <laughs> dark so so miss thing here she's she's um she's uh liking she's liking to play the victim a lot and that's very sad there's better ways to spend your time and to report about this is some sort of a you know people are against you no lady you've been against yourself for a while and that's that this is your problem and you're putting it on other people so, she thinks that engineers, she thinks that uh, the millions and, and billions of dollars that it takes to make these machines um, and the architects behind them all are all being, um, are fat shaming her and, and it's institutionalized and yada, 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 yada. All this victimhood. You're not a fucking victim. By the looks of it, you're not. And by the looks of it, I'm not either. And I don't ever claim to be a victim. I used to, but I don't anymore. You're not a fucking victim. Real victims are people that get trafficked overseas. Real victims are people that are that are um, subject to the crimes of illegal immigration coming in and killing their families. Real victims are people in Libya tra traveling to Libya looking to, to, to for a better life. You know, not that I support the fact that they're trying to go illegally into Europe to gain citizenship and a new life, but hum from a hum humanity humane perspective. I, I, I feel for them because Africa's not doing much for the plight of African the African community, so they have to resort to traveling to Libya, and then they get a risk, a risk of being sold as slaves. And this is not, that's, that's, that's not privilege. You're privileged. Yours isn't a plight. Theirs is. Oh my God, when are people going to stop playing victim in America? It's fun though. It's fun talking about it. You said that it's a form of bullying. I mean... That, that this that all these issues are a form of bullying. <sighs> Again, I've I've covered that already. My my explanation of it. And you say it's wrong. You know, I have more notes here, but I'm gonna stop with that. My overall thing is this: I think that that um, you're playing the victim way too hard here. You're, you're you're privileged. You're entitled. You have no issues. So you look for issues. 
You look for issues to write about, issues that don't matter. You got to, your friend even didn't really have an issue with it. Well, maybe she did, but she also got the, uh, the, uh, right in the front pass or whatever the fuck you call it. Take your privilege somewhere else, please. So, overall, I'm not going to complain when I'm not accepted somewhere. I'll, the only thing I really ever have to complain about is when somebody defames my name. I'm pretty sure there are other things as well. I know there are. And they'll come up as I keep making videos. But what are your guys' thoughts? I, I, I personally have a lot of bigger friends. I also have anorexic friends. I also have a lot of different types of friends. That doesn't define my friends. What defines my friends are their personalities and, and how much I appreciate them and love them. And if they were to go, I would miss them. You know, I, I that's why I'm very straightforward with a lot of them. With all of them, I should say. About like how I feel about their health, about how I feel about, you know, when they ask me, hey, you know, what can I do to get, you know, to stop this? I'm like, you want to hear the real truth? And they're like, yeah, fucking stop eating this, stop eating that, stop, start doing this, start doing that. I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, you're asking me for advice. Are you going to have me waste my time or are you going to, or are you authentically looking for me to help you out? Because um, I don't like wasting my time either. Time is short. I'm, 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 I'm a month away from, four, two months away, sorry, two months away from 41. And, um, and I'm not about to, I am not about to, um, waste my time anymore. Like I have been for a long time trying to help people who don't want to even help themselves. Go help yourself lady. Um, she brought up the fact that there was this guy who was motivated. She put it hers in quotes too. Motivated to lose weight so he can get on the Harry Potter ride. You know what lady? Again, you're putting words into his mouth. Maybe he was motivated in real life. Maybe your version of motivated is thinking that he was forced to. Oh my God. Do you understand how privileged you sound and how, how childish you sound when you're arguing about something like a ride and putting the word motivated in quotes? My God. Talk about privileged people problems again. You know what? I'm pretty sure he was very happy and it probably was a life-changing event for him. And you're saying it's, it's discrimination and she, he shouldn't have done that. It's the wrong way. It's a form of bullying is what you called it. It's not a form of bullying. You know, if anything, I would say an inanimate area like Universal Studios saved his life. You know? It motivated him. It's a weird way of looking at it, but you know what? Yeah, I didn't even think about that before, but Universal Studios just cut his chances of a heart attack, cut his, cut his chances of um, uh, heart failure, uh, high blood uh, related diseases and ailments, uh, cancers, cut them down because of a ride. Guess what, lady? You should learn that fucking lesson too. You know what? Be happy for who you are. Be happy for who you are. Um, I won't judge you. The only thing I'm judging you on here is your reaction towards it and how you think and how you're misinterpreting what people's actions are. You, you accuse the manager of being... Um, 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 discriminating against you. No, he's doing his job. He probably saved your fucking life. You're welcome. Um, and, you're, and you're putting words into these architects' mouths as well by saying that they're not thinking about you, that you're, that all these things that people design for smaller people uh, are being, um, uh, um, are shaming you. No. My God. This world, what has it become when people argue about the stupidest things. I'm arguing about stupid things right now, but I'm doing it for a reason. I'm doing it for a reason to show you how fucking stupid you sound. Or anybody who takes this argument. You're not a victim. You're not a victim when you, you're able to go to Universal Studios and enjoy the majority of luxuries that only maybe one or two percent of the entire living world has ever got to experience. Do you understand now how insane your argument sounds? Oh, I love calling it out. Anyways, what are you guys' thoughts? Am I overreacting here? Am I having too much fun with it? Um, is she in the right? Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, again, this is this is this is nothing about um, overweight people. We're all people, and we should all be treated equally. And it doesn't mean that you should be. And in and, and, and me saying that, it also I'm also saying you should not be putting words into other people's mouths when all they're trying to do is look out for your best interest and your life. What are you guys' thoughts? I appreciate all the responses, positive, negative. Hit me up. Love you guys. Have a great day, and talk to you later. Bye-bye. Well, have a great one. See you Monday. Even though no one's even going to view these, probably tell them about 25 deep, then maybe one, one person will have seen one, and that'll be cool. 
Then eventually you get that one guy who like really liked it. And he's going to click and watch all of them. You could be the first that guy. Think about that. Hmm?